Hello and welcome to DCB Live episode number 299. We'll be mm. skipping 300. No more. No, 300. <laughs> this is 299. Then it goes 301 next week. We so kind welcome. of are <laughs> skipping it because there's not going to be a whole lot of Destiny talk next week. <laughs> You're right. We're, get, we're getting it all out today. <laughs> yes. Paul, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. It's Absolutely. been way too long. <laughs> it's been a long time. You're um you're a new dad now, right? Since uh, I am, yes, yeah. that was uh, part part of the break here. Watts was kind enough to uh, give me paternity leave for. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'll wait, but, um, I'll wait a while. And no, <laughs> no, hearing it's, from it's Milan, it's like you need to wait four years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> eighteen <laughs> years, right? <laughs> but, uh, How those pulse yeah, ruffles? No, hopefully he'll pulse say that. Way. <laughs> pulse yeah. ruffle buff. The dad pulse ruffle buff feeling good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you got like a dad build that suddenly just happened that you're like, wow, this is really useful right now? To be fair, that's kind of always how I was playing, so it didn't really <laughs> shift too much. I was I was training for years with my pulse rifle already, right. so yeah, yeah, you're getting in the lane for it. Got Mark. it. Yeah, that makes mm-hmm. sense. Pro move. Yeah. <laughs> do, since uh, how old is your uh, your child? Uh, Noah is four months, like this week. Four months. So, do you have really any tips up. from Mylan, who is also brand yeah. new papa? Um, you're, you're like the future for me. Yeah, <laughs> tell me how to survive. Sleep should get better pretty soon. I know you're in like a rough sleep stretch at two months. So, barring any disasters, I think you should start getting some some more chain together hours. Like you know, four, five, six, seven. You know, I got up to ten. Keep, that was people like people keep record, telling me so. this ball when I have not yet to say it. People keep it get better. It gets better. It gets better. Where? <laughs> I don't understand what you're I, I, mean, about. I was in the good phase, and then apparently it gets worse, and then so I'm oh, gonna right. like backslide. So uh, when I got a puppy, it was barking a lot at night, so we just put the kennel down in the basement. Problem solved. Yeah, just you know, a little. Everyone was like, "Oh, Soundproof getting a walls. dog, like, well, that that'll help you like train to have a kid," and like, it it does nothing. It did not prepare <laughs> me remotely. <laughs> it, is, it is much easier than <laughs> my sure. my poor dog went from the only like the most loved child in the house to like just being told billy stop licking leo no stop leave me alone always the licking like don't lick his hands don't lick his hands he put his hands no (laughs) just like the drive by lick that (laughs) 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 stop that oh wow there you go well Well, there's gonna be a lot of destiny dads in the community there's uh we're gonna have to make a survival guard or something yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's more coming Whoa. too pretty yeah. soon here. Briar, do you have Wait. Destiny on your uh, iPad? Are you... Oh, he got it running. Yeah, <laughs> I just called it iPad. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> on a Steam Deck. You got it on the iPad. You got it on the iPad with the, with the devices Look, on the side. Don't tell Bungie because I don't want to get banned. <laughs> okay. We'll see the banned message pop up. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> but I got. Uh, I'm in the tower on the Steam Deck. I had to install Windows, uh, so that you can uh, use the anti-cheat software that. You know, Destiny comes with. Right. I can't remember what it's called, Battle Eye or something. Battle Eye. Yeah. yeah. Uh, aside from extremely slow loading, uh, loading into the tower for the very first time, uh, it seems pretty playable. Like this could be a, a nice thing to kind of augment your your uh, Destiny experience. Okay. How difficult was it to get? Do, I'm assuming you got a dual boot on there, correct? Yes, that's correct. I have an SD card inside the Steam Deck that has Windows installed on it. And how finicky, fussy, or easy was it to get that to happen onto the Steam Deck? It was uh, a YouTube search away. It was (laughs) download three things. You got to download Windows. You got to download the drivers for the Steam Deck in Windows. And you had to download, like, basically a piece of software to make create an ISO out of Windows. Like That's to it. install Windows onto the SD card, uh, which was extremely easy. Uh, and then w- once you've got Windows installed on the on the uh, on the uh, SD card, <laughs> you just put the drivers onto like in a folder on the SD card. Put it in. You hold the volume button. I think it's the volume down button mm-hmm. and the power button, and then it boots up and it asks you which would what would you like oh. to boot from. And you could choose your SD card, and then it goes through the Windows setup for the first time, which doesn't take very long. Um, and then you got to install the drivers because it doesn't know, it doesn't have any sound. It doesn't, it's 
it starts out in portrait mode like this. So Windows boots up like this. Nice. Um, I, <laughs> I, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I New think you plan. can. I think you can um, navigate Windows solely with like the touchpad and like the on-screen keyboard. But I plugged in a mouse and keyboard because it was so much easier. Yeah. And then once I got Steam running, you know, it's pretty easy to navigate Steam with just your fingers touching the screen. Hmm. Um, cool. Yeah, it seems like it's See, working. The, I mean, the thing is, you said that was easy, but then you went on for like a five-minute. <laughs> Well, I'm like, yeah, you know, I haven't yeah. put anything on an ISO since I was like pirating games like 15 years ago. <laughs> Back when yeah. Yi was I mean, pirating on the bay. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't know those terms, I I, I assure you, it, it's not that difficult. And okay. like, I watched a YouTube video that was made like two weeks ago. Watch a YouTube video that was made two weeks ago, not two months ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because Feed the algorithm the with the new, new vid. Right. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, uh, it, it, it's interesting it, that you could good. have different boots onto different SD yes. cards. So you just, you know, whip out yeah. your SD card for the particular boot that you want. If you want a different flavor of Linux or Unix, some stuff like that. Maybe maybe there's a Hackintosh getting built out there on a Steam Deck. Oh, that <laughs> is interesting. <laughs> totally unnecessary. <laughs> but why not? Right? You got yeah, the, you got why? the <laughs> why? Not the why? More likely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's yeah. cool. Have, have you played much Destiny on it? Like, does the no? I literally it? just got it working, like in the pre-show. Oh, okay. So you haven't done so a strike. Bry's quiet during the show. Yeah. Just gonna play the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't. Bry will be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gone and collected yeah, yeah. silver leaves and then the ash and then convert and then don't oh. max out and then the the, the, the crap but that's so many damn things i the... <laughs> want to read it to you guys the explanation that ava gives us i want to just read it word for word because yeah. uh this was this event Usually, when I get on and something's happening and I'm like, hey, guys, I'm streaming, I'm asking people, how does this work? Everyone's like, this is exactly how it works. This is what you do. This is how you do it. I'm like, cool. Sounds good. This time, I was like, how does it work, guys? They're like, I'm, I'm figuring it out myself <laughs> right now. It was, for the, it was the first time that it ever happened where everyone was just like, no idea. Don't know. I'll tell you what I know. It was quite amazing. So this is, is like the new player event stuff. too. This is like the free to play. Like, <laughs> hey everyone, experiment with armor stats, and then like it's like the most convoluted system of all time built into it. Yeah, the, yeah. the chance of it lowering a stat and be like, hey, it's gonna maybe get better, but it might get worse. Do <laughs> I don't know. Is your stat? Is your it's armor nice. sixty? Cool. That's a. Uh, I could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> That's risky. If it's sixty, Wait, so are, you, are you gonna mm -hmm. rate us the? Uh, the I'm gonna. The I'm. I'm walking to her right now. All right. Because when I first read it, I was just like, "Huh? Excuse <laughs> <What>? me. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Is from having English? been through the the twab each week and being mm -hmm. like, I should have some awareness. I was like, this is needlessly complicated. <laughs> Right. really funny even some of the the event challenges are confusing like there's one that says defeat taken in the yeah, bonfire bash but, it's supposed but to you be. have to defeat captains or yeah. like the no 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 yeah. it's just it's just you have to go past the taken round <laughs> that's like it's like well two that's taken even rounds more and, confusing yeah, i i know <laughs> that's <laughs> okay confusing. it's just yeah. beat it 10 times that's essentially what that challenge is are you guys strapped in and ready for your ready. explanation yeah. of solstice how about that Earn silver leaves from completing activities throughout the game with candescent armor equipped. Bring a full set of candescent armor rewards the most silver leaves. Launch into the bonfire bash and stoke Total. the bonfire to turn silver leaves into silver ash. Stoke the more it. you stoke the bonfire, the more silver leaves can be transformed into silver ash, and the more solstice armor and weapons that are awarded. Silver ash can be used on candescent armor to apply glowing embers, then shining embers, then stat sparks, all of which reroll stats for that armor piece. Complete event challenges located on the quest screen to acquire kindling, which can be applied to candescent armor. Doing so grants access to better embers and stat roll choices from sparks. Glows can be acquired for candescent armor by fully rekindling an armor piece by applying kindling. Solstice or war packages which may contain mass word materials can be purchased from Ava using silver ash. You got that? 
Figure oh, it yeah. out. And <laughs> nailed it. Cake. Come on. <laughs> Is there going to be a test at the end of this? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. That was all in one text block from Ava? Yeah, so when you go to the screen, she's got, you know, the the event and the, the bounties on the right-hand side. And then on the left, there's a little exclamation mark, a little eye information mark, a little Oh, eye. yeah, yeah, that little You thing, hover yeah. over that, and it and tells like... you that. It's the whole page. It's the whole screen. It's... What a <laughs> poor choice of explanation. <laughs> what if you just did the thing, and then it gave you armor? <laughs> that's too easy, easy man. Too easy. They already done that. <laughs> like that. That could be good. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm I'm definitely at the point now where I don't like doing stuff in Destiny that's like not that I don't enjoy. <laughs> like yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. like going and doing whatever to get to get Patrols? whatever seasonal currency is. Then do I just want to do the new event and get stuff from that? Basically. Yeah, I'm progressing the 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 thing. You know, the mission, whatever it's called, the quest line. And like I'm going through all those things that you have to complete to get whatever additional currency to progress the quest line, and I'm like, which one of these are going to be fast? None of them are fast. So I'm like, I got to do an fast. endless amount of patrols, and I'm like, I guess I'll do hand cannons and heavy weapon kills. And like by the time I get the patrols done, I'm like, the hand cannon and heavy kills are like 30, 40 percent. I'm like, what? I just. Ah, ah. And they got rid of the alt boosts, so like you're just you're not gonna do this on three characters for any reason. I don't yeah. know why you would. Um, that's so an, that's yeah. I don't get it. That's crazy. They didn't give an alt boost, especially with how much grind there is for those. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I don't really know why you'd even do it unless you really want the white glow. Like you like or, the you like the bash. You're about the bonfire. Yeah, yeah. Love jets. Love the bash. Yeah. <laughs> Love you nut that. bush in the day, you bonfire bash at night. Right, Mylon? I, I, I was talking about this on Twitter earlier where like I find it really weird that what they converted EAZ into, where it used to be this like, oh, it's like this verticality, like we've never really like seen anything like this. You're racing around, like doing things, and like you do the chest runs and everything's on roofs. Now I stand in one corner <laughs> and wait for a captain to drop and kill him, and then twice I gotta go find some taken. And like it really it change it into essentially like a forge but like with less enemies and like a oh, boss yeah. that instantly dies it's very that's a good like, description it is like the forge it, it's very it's like very like new player free player friendly but then they had the most complicated like reward system of all time so like it's very i don't quite get what they were going for here yeah like at first i wasn't just standing in a spot and i was trying to race to them and every time i got there like my teammates had killed them and then i'd yeah. run try to that's run to I the next one well. yeah and then they had killed them i'm like I'm literally just running across the map backwards and forth. I'm like, okay, I think I just yeah. stay in one spot. Like, and bro, you, just, you, you take your corner and you kill the thing. Yeah. And then you go search for the Taken and you go kill them. You're like, bro, I'm trying to get my kindling. You keep taking my kills. I'm supposed <laughs> to kill the guy. You're taking my kindling. I need the embers of the, 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 the large kindling. In the... Yeah. yeah. It's it definitely oh makes God. sense as you play it. But reading it, I'm just like, I'm doing what? And yeah. there is a quest that walks you through, like, doing the stuff with the armor, which is nice. Uh, but, yeah, it's def definitely very I, confusing. I get, I get upgrading each slot three times. That, like, kind of makes sense. But I don't get why then it makes you re-roll three different times to get, like, the max value with like three different types of embers like that could have been one thing easily. Like, yeah, just that's... let me put 100 embers into it and see what happens. Like, I don't know why that has to be like a multi-stage Process. Yeah, I completely confusing. agree. Yeah. Like the three time kindling thing, fine. Cool. You're getting it to the point where you can re roll it. And then at that point, it's like, just re roll it. <laughs> you, yeah. you unlocked re rolling on the thing. Good. Go re roll. Have fun. Mm -hmm. I feel like the default is always add extra steps because we can take it away rather than not have enough and everyone complete it too quick and then you can't add to it. Like, I feel like that's Bungie's sort of default if you look at crafting weapon crafting or anything like this where you give players some autonomy they'd much rather make it super grindy at the beginning and then take away mm -hmm. rather than yeah you're def too easy straight away i feel like that's starting yeah. to bite them though because it feels like do, everything yeah. they introduce is like so grindy that everyone's like no nope, like it. i'm out like I, I feel like they can only do this so many times before they lose overall engagement because like 
it, it takes, you know, it's taking what, like two or three seasons to get crafting down to like be somewhat manageable. And even now it's it's like five patterns per thing. Like that's too grindy. Obviously, they're probably going to end up producing that. But like, I, I think they're starting too, too grindy too much at the time these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think in general, there's a lot of fatigue just with playing destiny in general, like I, I know, I just, I know what I, there's some things in destiny that I absolutely love. I want to spend my time doing that. And when I'm forced to go do an activity to get a seasonal currency, like I'm, I just, I can't do it anymore. So I just, I get so angry and so grumpy. I'm like, I'm not going to play a game and be angry about it. I'm going to just do the things I like. The thing is I don't get anything from doing stuff you that I like. Your like I, I spent all my day doing solid flawless, which I absolutely love. And I think it's a pinnacle of destiny and I get nothing for it. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Yeah. They attached a whole bunch of activities that I could care less about to the kindling. Like I said, go do temp patrols. I haven't done temp patrols in a row in like, I don't, can't remember how many seasons ago. Uh, even when there's a brand new DLC or expansion, I'm like, eh, I'll do it patrol here and there but not 10 for god's sakes and then a bunch of uh yeah um what do you call the uh <laughs> the public events same thing i'm like i'm not gonna go out of my way to do a bunch of public events but they got you four patrols you got to do the either the moon or the throne world ones where it's like literally walk 10 feet and like interact with an object and that's yeah. the it's like a lore thing and then that's like a public event or that's a that's a patrol done that's literally the only that's ones like true. this <laughs> i was i was doing the kill something patrols because I, I, I did a few of the kills ones during yeah. altars of sorrow just because they just complete yeah. in eight seconds <laughs> mm -hmm. no that's that's a good good way of doing it i was doing that because i was trying to double up with the hand cannon kills and the heavy kills and then afterwards mm -hmm. i looked and i saw that i was just going ultra slow and so yeah would have been faster yeah i, I think something. it's supposed to be just like kind of like a walking tour of the whole game which is mm -hmm. like again it's like a free event so they're just trying to get people who maybe came in right. i don't know in the last right. season or two to do stuff that they haven't seen before didn't know they could access like i mean i haven't run a dares of eternity and since it right. launched so like that you know that yeah. they're throwing people into that too stuff like that so um i mean i i get it but it is very grindy and you do end up doing a lot of stuff where you're just like what am i doing <laughs> yeah would you like them to focus on more grind in the bonfire bash itself as opposed to having to go out and do various activities that you don't care about currently yeah. i'm much more likely to do something that is new and shiny, even if it's, you know, similar to previous seasonal events. Like I'm much mm -hmm. more likely to spend time in a, in a new event than I am to go and do activities outside of the event to get the seasonal currency or to do get the to get the event currency. Mm -hmm. Also, but, I just yeah. would prefer there not to be so many event currencies steps <laughs> in there. Yeah, I um. I would, so Bonfire Bash is obviously, it's something that's going to come once a year mm -hmm. with Solstice. So I would definitely prefer to be spending more of my time in there than outside of it. But it's definitely the other way around. Like it takes, a, they're pretty stingy with silver leaves, to be honest. Like it's, it's pretty stingy. I feel like they could give you more because right now the, the best way that you can get silver leaves is to do uh, cheesing uh, legendary campaign missions. Yep. And I totally get that cheesing stuff and finding workarounds is going to net you more stuff in general. That's just how it's always going to be. But I think it would be really nice if they gave us more from just doing the challenges mm -hmm. that we're working on, right? Like getting, yeah. getting like what, six from a crucible match or f five from a crucible yeah. match four if you're yeah. wearing, you know, not all of it. That's like, come on, four or five for like 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, it's like five of those, more. and then you you do one bonfire to cash twenty leaves in, and like yeah. you're getting five rewards and and stuff and whatever. But then you gotta go do another five crucible matches for gambit games or something. So it, it's yeah, it doesn't it's cap really out heavily weighted towards existing activities. Yeah. Hundred leaves. Yeah. So yeah. every time you do a bonfire bash, it exchanges twenty leaves. 20 leaves for 100 ash. If you if you do 20 ignitions, which I don't think I've ever not done 20 ignitions, but Right. Um, yeah, that's that's the conversion rate. Twenty ignitions, and ash, and silver leaves can carry the two. Split the <laughs> bungee in half. And seven, seven, seven. Ignition when you grab the ball and you throw it. <laughs> you're stroking the fires or something. Stroke the forge. Stroking them. Yep. 
You it's, stroke, yep. stroke the forge, insert. Stroke the forge. The ash. 20 times. You stroke collect. them 20 times, you get okay. ash. Yeah. Where do you pet the kitty? <laughs> no, they, they deleted the, the cat from the sewers. It's, uh, you can't even get there anymore. <laughs> oh. Oh man, um, yeah. I think uh, I think that's actually my biggest issue right now with Bonfire Bash is that you're not like enticed to play Bonfire Bash for the loop that often. Yeah. It's yeah, it's like twenty yeah. percent of the time if you're gonna take the whole account into there. You know? you know what it's like? It's like working your day job, which you do ninety nine percent of the time, and then sometimes you go to the bank to cash a check. Mm. That's Bonfire Bash. <laughs> 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 well, like I wouldn't want to be doing like a ton more bonfire badge because like it's not that interesting. Yeah. Like, it's we just, need it's more enemies. Basic. I would yeah, love there, there's no, some there's more no enemy density at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I ideally, if they want you to be earning an event currency outside of the event, you should be able to play what you enjoy in Destiny and get a reasonable amount in a reasonable amount of time. And I feel like at the moment those numbers are off. You can't if you like Crucible, you can't just go into Crucible and get enough of the event currency quick enough, really. And I think when you get to the point where people are like, okay, this is way too long. I'm going to look up how to cheese this. You you know, you sort of failed a bit there. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you've got enough of it, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, great. I've done, you know, five, even five Crucible matches. And now I've maxed out. You know, what, how many do you have to do to max out? You're only getting five each time for a Crucible match. You have to do 20 matches. What are leaves cap at? Is it 100? It's 100 leaves. Okay, 100 yeah. leaves and 500 ash. Is Those there a place camps. where you can easily see that stuff? Because yeah, I, I, wear, I, I haven't been able to see where ash is. I don't, ash I don't know is where. on the armor when you go to That's the place you have to look at. Oh mm -hmm, like crafting, yeah. I guess. You look in your inventory for the leaves and then you look on Didn't the armor for the ash. we just do this with the crafting ash. and all the materials you couldn't see? And the see. kindling. The kindling is also on the armor. Yeah, it's it's a it's a lot. Convenient. I feel like this could have been cut down to a lot less stuff. And for some reason, Solstice is really grindy. That's the one event that's like incredibly grindy, like doing twenty five Crucible or Gambit matches, and that's per character. Yeah, no speeding that up. No, like it it, it has always been like this though. Like like the th yeah. like yeah. three or four stages of armor. So this this could be less grindy. Overall, if there was a character boost, I, I think mm -hmm. if there was a character boost, it would be overall less grindy than some of the past ones. But yeah, it's I don't know. I don't think it's it's definitely not worth it in its current state here. Yeah, it just feels something. It just feels different not being able to go look at the armor and see the progress versus having to go into the booklet for your event pass and then see like the get through the pages to see which one you were trying to track. Um, oh yeah. You're right. The one good thing with the event challenge is that you it being in the book is you can track, obviously not all of them, but you can track some of them from your ghost. So you can just pull yeah. it up, which is nice. But uh, yeah, it's I don't know, it's just weird. It's a bit weird. It's a, it's a lot. I was I was saying in chat today. I was like, so for people that don't like Crucible, do you think they're gonna prefer playing twenty five Gambit matches? <laughs> Are they like, well? At least I can go play Gambit. So that's you need all. A, you need a hundred guardian kills anyway. So like, unless you're like Mister oh. Gambit Invader, Dude. you know, racking fifteen mm. kills a game. Like you're you're gonna have to play Crucible probably at some point. Do you know if team kills count? Like if your buddy goes in invades and gets kills, they do not. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's. I I know that for a fact. So I I just yeah, ran in with Storm Chaser and just was invading, and only my kills counted for that. So. Mm. Um, like I see... assisted kills in, in Crucible count, but that's it. Mm, okay, so it's yeah. like you can at least play you can Crucible. get assists in Crucible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, play Crucible or Gambit, but oh, to move that needle, it's going to be a lot of games. Unless you're a god. I, uh, I see a comment of it's a four week event. Are you telling me that five matches a week is too much? So it's five matches a week for one character for one challenge. Yeah. So you're not going to just be doing your five matches a week to complete the booklet. You have, what, 24 challenges to do in this booklet per character? Yeah. So. That's like that's the longest one, but like even it's like 10, 10 Wellspring runs to get like the uh, Throne World activities thing. Like if you're not doing a vow or something like so it's there. there's some long ones in there for sure. Yeah. 
Uh, has anybody bought the booklet? Bought the pass? I did. Nice. So what's what's your experience? Bungie specifically gave me a thousand silver as like a press thing to like, and they said they're like, we're going to give you a thousand silver to buy the booklet and like. Oh, is that why I have a thousand silver? Yeah, oh yeah, like, you're on the list. What then, the yeah. fuck is going on? I'm gonna buy the dog <laughs> emblem with it instead. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm like, I might buy the glows. I don't know if I'm gonna the spend this on the great. booklet. Um, the booklet is not great. Like the booklet is kind of, it's it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Because if you put too much cool stuff in it, you've like overvalued it for ten bucks, and no one's gonna buy the glows or the ornaments. But like, even if technically an exotic emote is like ten bucks. The stuff that's in that booklet is like, it's fine, but it's not something I probably would have bought individually. So I'm not going to buy it all together. I kind of want yeah. the shader. That's really it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to pay yeah. ten dollars for a shader, although it's free. So maybe I should. Buy it. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it's like you said, it's between a rock and a hard place, right? It's not super worth buying it. And you don't want to make it super worth buying it. So the good news is that you can just play the event for free as a free player and do the event thing, and you're not really missing out on anything yeah what what are you missing out if you don't buy the pass the the um event it's like a ghost projection and emotes uh i think there's a sparrow or i think yeah i think there's a sparrow a shader it's like five things it's some cosmetic stuff now right but like the better cosmetics are being sold separately in the store like there's better emotes ornaments you know stuff like that yeah, if it had it, one good ornament in it, it would probably be be more, you know, worthwhile. But then you get yeah. people complaining you can't buy it separately. I don't know. So I, I feel like it's a missed opportunity to take a pass model and convert that to get more of the cool stuff for playing the event. Like if if I knew that I could unlock the majority of those cool cosmetics that they are trying to sell separately, then I would consider it more, even if it was a bit more money, if it was like 15 bucks, something like that, and it was a, a thing that I'd unlock for the entire event to get basically all the cool cosmetics, then I feel like I'd be more into that as something to work towards if I'm enjoying the event, you know? So it's funny. So yeah. I, I've said that before about an Eververse season pass mm-hmm. where, okay, the season costs 10 bucks, whatever, you get all the stuff in the pass, but like a, a separate like Eververse track where you can get all of the stuff they sell at Eververse that season for X amount, probably going to cost more money, but that's similar to what you're saying. Like I would like to see something like that. That's probably something I would do. Mm -hmm. However, it's like, is Bungie going to be like, well, normally we're selling three sets of armor for $45 total. So we're not going to do that. Yeah. It's probably, you know, cost benefit to them. Which is unfortunate because yeah, like there's the collector side and then there's the people who are definitely not going to spend you know, all that, like wh- however much hundred, several, I don't know what it costs to buy everything in a reverse every season. But yeah, like that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like it's I, probably it's, around a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. So because so, the armor alone is 45, it's 15 each, like every season. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, you can stuff rotates in for bright dust. So that kind of complicates things. Yeah. Um, but. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Uh, I was curious about that. I haven't bought it. I had no plans to buy the um, the, the seasonal. I don't imagine it's gonna do very well. I, I think they're just kind of experimenting with it. I bet they'll do it mm-hmm. again for a new new event. I bet they'll put more stuff in it. Yeah, I think that's what'll happen. Hmm. Yeah, I think the best thing is if you don't like doing this stuff is not to play. I think Destiny community always has an issue with like I can't not play. I need the shiny thing. But I think. From the people I've spoke about this event, people are like, eh, I'm just not going to do it because I don't need the armor or I don't need whatever. And I think that has more of an impact on future events when there is low population engaging in something rather than like people do it, but they don't really want to do it. But there's something brand and new and shiny that everyone wants. So everyone sort of bites down and does it anyway. And like, hey, see the population is nice and healthy. I don't know. I've got a different feeling about this event. I feel like people are like, hmm. Mm. I don't need it. I'm there's not nothing. There's it. nothing to go for. I mean, we we even talk about the the weapons. Like yeah. nobody cares about these weapons. They're not good weapons. I mean, they're just not. Uh, you wash your mouth cannon. out because the hand cannon with the bug has made the most entertaining <laughs> okay, and fun okay. content that has been around in a while. That is very true. That is going to get patched it sometime. Is. <laughs> no, and they might leave it up for a while. Really but... fun. Yes, that have is you, very. Have you been doing some great. of that? You, we tried it out in Kyle what is what's a little the bug? bit. Um, yeah, with the like sixteen round. So, yeah. what's it called? Dreamwork or something? What's the perk called? 
Yeah, I think it's tree work. Yeah. yeah. So basically, what it's meant to do is, if you get an assist, or so, like you shoot someone and they kill it for you, is meant to overload the hand cannon. So it, it increases the magazine size. But for whatever reason, if you shoot something, switch to your heavy, someone else kills that ad, it overloads your heavy. So you can have Gallahorn with the entirety of his reserves in the magazine. <laughs> so you can just fire eight, nine shots of Gallahorn without reloading. And it's it's really fun. Because people be, people are doing it with uh, Fourth Horseman and like one phasing Keitel. It's like, and then hell just goes all the way down. It's actually really fun. So we we we've been playing around with that. Yeah, I stumbled there's upon some, that. But there's was, some cool yeah. things that you can do with the hand cannon, uh, like in Crucible because it has harmony on it, so you can two tap if you get harmony. <clears throat> there's not that many weapons these days that can two tap in the Crucible. They've tried to bring that down, although they do keep bringing it back up. Um, mm -hmm. But this is one of them. You get you get Harmony procked and you can two tap. Uh, it's, of course, also a Stasis 120, which we don't have. Uh, but Compass Rose can get uh, Incandescent on it, which Incandescent on any weapon Just makes fun. it pretty good. <laughs> so it can get that on it, which is nice. What yeah, the they available? just did the shotgun buff too. So like, I I picked up like a yeah. lead for gold vorpal, and like that does some good damage. I mean, there's a couple shotguns I can get vorpal, obviously, but mm -hmm. you can really feel the buff on on PVE shotguns, which is nice. I mean, it's nice. not exclusive to Compass Rose, but uh, that's that's felt pretty good on it. Uh, what weapons did they introduce with this? Did they get the hand cannon? What else? The hand cannon the called something new, which is hilarious. And the Compass Rose is from last year. It was like the first. Solstice yeah. weapon. It seems pretty clear they're going to do a weapon for every new event now. Um, they didn't always do that for all events. Um, I think they started with Vessel of the Lost, maybe the first one to get dedicated weapons. Either that or the Dawning. Mm -hmm. Maybe Avalanche was like the first one which from yeah, Dawning. I'm not like, sure. But I feel like Dawning uh, now they're all going to have their own origin traits, uh, which is interesting. So, right. as, as we've seen already, um, we don't know what the Festival one is or the Dawning one is yet, but um, Classy Restoration will be the. Guardian Games would. Right. Cool. Well, Bonfire Bash. Solstice. Bonfire Bash. Yeah. Um, Push Bash. We are getting a confirmation news in Hot Off the Presses that the Witch Queen Mission Silverleaf Farm has been patched. Oh. Yep. That was fast. Well, that was, that was fast. quick. Don't want too many silver leaves converted to silver ash converted to <laughs> kindling converted to kindling armor re rerolled into armor. You gotta stamp down inflation. It's gonna be bad yep. for the destiny economy. I really think we need to just give people more leaves. It's supposed to be like a fun event, right? It's a fun yeah. event. Maybe people want to do it on all their characters. They want to bash a little bit. But I feel like the way that they've they've set it up is a lot of people are looking at it and they're like. I don't understand it. This seems really overwhelming and convoluted, and I can't be bothered to figure it out. <laughs> so, uh, once you do figure it out, it's like not really that worth it. <laughs> yeah. Given what's what's there, but yeah. Should we talk about uh, the exciting announcement mm, of an announcement? Yeah. Mm -hmm. announcement yeah. Of <laughs> August twenty third. Twenty third. The future of Destiny. We're getting uh, some... Well, actually, I didn't know exactly. Do, do we know anything outside of them <laughs> just announcing stuff that they're excited to talk about? Like, we saw that announcement it's, video. It's Lightfall. That. Like, I know that. <laughs> Lightfall. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if Lightfall is the only thing they're going to talk about. Like, it could be... I mean, it's, it's the day Season 18 launches, and they said we're not hearing about Season 18, essentially, um, until then. So there could be oh, some really? sort of, like... Attach. I mean, they said maybe like we'll talk about sandbox and stuff, but they're gonna. I think they're gonna do the thing again they did last time, um, which I, I assume whatever they're gonna reveal about Lightfall will have something very pressing to do with season eighteen, which is kind of maybe yeah. why they're scheduling it that way. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so okay, we, could, we could see stuff there. Yeah. I Viana was kind of so playing early. around that I don't think they're gonna talk about Arc three point ahead of time either. But yeah, we'll see. Mm. Yeah, they kind of. I don't think they want to talk about anything anymore. <laughs> they <don't. Yeah>. They're <laughs> a little you know shy right Fuck now. You guys. The communication, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for good reason. Um, I do you find it a bit early if they start talking about Lightfall? Basically, was that six month window? Because I'm assuming it's, it's two come seasons out. ahead of time. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, like in, in terms of the time of the year, this is when they've done it in the past, but now right. they're doing all the expansions in the spring. So I, I have to believe it's it's something that has to do with the seasonal story that they're just it would give it away or something if they get ramps up to it. I, I don't know. It's it's something they want to get out kind of ahead of time so people know it's coming and like and I don't know, may, maybe yeah. they're feeling there's not enough hype at the current moment so they decided to do it a little earlier but okay do you think we've okay we we've had long seasons before we mm-hmm. had a six month season do you think it's within bungie's power to decide to do two short seasons instead of three month seasons and then move or... up move up the release date of lightfall are you trying to get it out like before christmas no nah, i guess that that wouldn't make sense right? they won't they're not gonna do it no <laughs> I was wondering that too, and though, Tiffany, because like the the traditionally all summer has been hyped for like the big September release, mm-hmm. right? And like they've been so effective with it. And then for the holiday season, you have a new like Destiny expansion that everybody is raving about, or you know, usually they're pretty beefy and people are pretty excited for it. Yeah. Uh, but now that they've moved it to spring, like I I I do wonder like maybe they just want to have that excitement going through the holidays. For what's coming up yeah like i wonder if they want to reset that to get it back into that cycle of the holiday season i wonder for, too you yeah. know because obviously I, fin- financially i'd imagine i think they're trying to get out of the holiday season i don't know if they oh, want really? that competition because this year's kind of like there's not as much as usual maybe but it's so crowded that i i feel like they think maybe they can get overwhelmed if they're just doing like an expansion when everyone else is doing like yeah you know, old new games and stuff like that so I, I don't I don't know if this is a direct quote, but I, I I thought I remember them saying something about how this is kind of what they wanted to do going forward was like mm. an, a you know late spring. winter early spring kind of release thing. Um, I, I mean I am curious if they're going to be able to keep hitting the year schedule like consistently now because they have to push yeah, it. They do the a summer. very good job of hitting their schedules, but it's also the video game industry and yeah. things happen. So I if yeah. I wonder if that could end up. Push the summer. We have another six month season sometime, but I guess I don't know. If they're doing Lightfall stuff now, I'm pretty confident it'll be here around when Witch Queen was. Sure, yeah. I mean, they're very open about making sure that they don't have to crunch, which I think is awesome. So if they did have to push it, it's like, well, you know, I'd rather Bungie employees be happy than than hate working on the game, you know. So, uh, but I I find that interesting that, uh, yeah, we're, we're hearing, most likely hearing about this like six months early to start prepping. I remember Witch Queen, it felt a bit like we were, <laughs> it felt a bit long, you know, of that anticipation of having to wait, I guess maybe because it was a six month season. That could no, have well, it, it was, was yeah, time. delayed. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When did they announce the Witch Queen? Like when did we start, start seeing trailers for Witch Queen? Was it in August? Was it August? Well, I thought they had the showcase. I don't know. I need to look that up. I thought it was August. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's usually uh, August. Yeah, 24th. no, it was August twenty fourth. It was. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty Day much different. exactly. Okay. Yeah, so I okay. guess technically they did this already. We just the season split is just different. Yeah. Because yeah, they did already. Not gonna have a six a, month season. Right. They did already. So maybe we'll worked. have another seasons that lead up into Lightfall. You know, a bit mm-hmm. like how they did with Witch Queen. Season of a loss. Seems was, like it. You know, fantastic season with, well, I mean, sort of ended without a conclusion, but started up Witch Queen, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, Honestly, it seems like that's the case because they're, um, yeah. they're, like they said, they're not doing any real reveals in the TWAB until then. Mm-hmm. So, also, what we got right after the Witch Queen reveal is almost immediately they did a whole Void 3.0 thing, like six months early, which is the opposite of what's happening now. But, uh, so, I mean, this is, I guess this is the biggest question I have about the Lightfall reveal is if this is like time to get a fifth subclass. Like, I'm mm-hmm. done predicting like, oh, it's a new enemy race coming. Like, I I <laughs> think I'm over that concept at this point. But uh, I I do wonder because everyone thought Witch Queen was going to get a fifth subclass at the time, and then it didn't. And now I'm I'm wondering if this is finally time. And that but that would be kind of weird if they don't show Arc, and then there is another subclass. They're showing. Both of those. I, I'm just, I'm very curious. How you don't that's think be that there's going to be arc in next season? No, I do think there's going to be arc. I just don't know when they're going to like reveal arc or talk about arc, whether that would be like during the showcase or 
never and they just launch it like they did solar but solar yeah, didn't Zola, didn't the, solar just released didn't it yeah i think it's going to be more yeah, along they those didn't lines say and i i think it's for temper expectations you know type of thing like solar yeah like void was awesome solar was okay there's some things here and there so i, I have a feeling like arc might fall along the same line so instead of hyping it up and talking about it a lot just drop it with the season and see how people respond to it and see what um what's broken that's how i i feel like they're gonna do it anyways and that witch yeah. queen stream was kind of incredible i remember watching that like they're doing what yeah. they have what yeah. what's happening it was uh it was crazy so um yeah. Very excited. They specifically did say witness what's next, and they specifically say Destiny 2 showcase. It doesn't say Lightfall showcase. It doesn't say like the name of a season showcase or anything like that. It's specifically Destiny 2 showcase. So you're telling me there's no witness. Destiny 3? I don't know, Tefty. Uh, I don't not know. until the end of this constant <laughs> generation. I'm holding out hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh my god. Isn't that coming out on mobile? <laughs> yeah, that's maybe they'll really show off mobile. the mobile game. That that's so that is that's one thing I do maybe. wonder is if they're gonna sneak some other right. Destiny announcement in here. So like obviously Lake yeah. Falls yeah. would be the big thing, but you know they're doing a Destiny mobile game. We know they're doing a Destiny media project. I think it's an animated series. I wonder if that could be something that it's finally time to like at least tease it. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if not fully debut it, but yeah, yeah. Where would very that, interesting. Where would that stream on Sony? Does Sony have a streaming service for video and like you know TV shows? Mm, and no, so. they just license things to places. I'm pretty like sure Paramount. When yeah. 4K yeah. was super duper new, you could buy this like it looked like a huge hockey puck that was like a Sony streaming thing, but it worked really weird. As you buy stuff from the Sony store, it would download to your puck and then it, you couldn't play it until it was fully downloaded like it downloaded like the full like 4k file famous wow. sony puck <laughs> you yeah. could forget it's its sony impact puck. it I was like a couple cool. thousand dollars too if of course, of course Jesus. it's like the microsoft <laughs> zune yeah my father <laughs> had one. <laughs> oh my god i mean they they have you can buy movies on the playstation store can't you yeah, yeah, you can. It's just really. I thought like they they did something recently where like you would, you lost access to some movies because they oh, got really? taken off of it. Maybe I don't know if that was PlayStation or not, but I thought I thought it was Sony. I could be wrong. Yeah, but it was I during the PlayStation Four gonna... when they tried to make the PlayStation Store like a media destination. Right, they had like a series that was only on the PlayStation Store. They had like a, a few things. Yeah. It didn't was really like go a, anywhere. A comic book show. I, po Power, yeah. I think that's what it was. Power. That's yeah. the only Powers thing I remember. Maybe Power. they had more, yeah. but... Mm. So I think that was their attempt, and now they're just like, you know what? We're going to make Uncharted movies and uh, Last of Us TV shows on HBO, so... I swear to God, though. If they go, Last of if, Us if, HBO? Yep. Oh, okay. interesting, yeah. So it could be, yeah. I, I swear, if they decide to add another tier... To their freaking subscription service, go. Oh, that would premium be premium, and then ultra. I mean, frankly, it's you, you got to subscribe yeah, to ultra enough. for 150 a year. And be like, oh, sweet Jesus. Well, <laughs> so the thing is, is, is Sony owns Crunchyroll, so if they're gonna do a Destiny anime series, that fits pretty well right there. They but... already have it set up. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. And they also they have, have Crunchyroll. They own Crunchyroll. They purchased Funimation and put Funimation with Crunchyroll. Yeah, so now they have anime. like <laughs> uh, most of the anime. They have they have a lot of stuff there. Um, hmm. And then they also have some animation studios that they work with. So Sony's kind of set up for that stuff pretty easily. I mean, that would that'd be a good way of getting people to sign up for Crunchyroll who not, weren't necessarily yeah. already signed up for it and to get anime fans into Destiny. Yeah. I, I just don't Do you think you would start with some more mainstream. Rather I mean, than like Crunchyroll, anime specifically, like Netflix. Could be yeah, Netflix, Netflix yeah. HBO. Yeah, it, I mean, Netflix has done a lot of video game adaptations and animated, yeah. especially recently, that have yeah. done. Very, like Castlevania is like the gold standard, and then Arcane came along, was even better. So, yeah, um, yeah. that would be. I but considering this is technically Sony now, and Sony owns their anime streaming platform, I would be surprised if it got sold to to Netflix or something. But mm -hmm. I also think just I, I, I it's hard for me to imagine them starting with some crazy high budget live action Destiny series. Like yeah, I don't 
that's yeah. such right. a Halo risk. turned I mean, out so well. Look at, yeah, look at Halo exactly. So <laughs> Halo that's the Mass thing, Effect. Right? If it's like space magic, which Destiny has a lot, you would need a lot of CG to like oh, sell yeah. Destiny oh, live oh, action, yeah. and that is expensive to do mm -hmm. well. Yeah. So animating it would definitely, regardless of the style, whether it's like a traditional hand drawn animation style, whether it's arcane animation style, whatever that is, it's definitely going to be cheaper than doing CG live action. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting though. I'd love to see a Destiny. And then TV you could show. get the voice actors. If it's yeah. animated, you could have all uh, the actual. I don't care. If it's live action, I still want Lance. To even <laughs> <laughs> he should. He should definitely. I don't care. Yeah, I yes. still want him as yeah. a volunteer. Absolutely. <laughs> Side tangent: Have you seen Resident Evil? Yeah, no, no. I have. The the reviews were so bad that it's I just like ah, I'm not going to do this. Deeply oh. terrible, except <laughs> for Lance. Lance is very good, but that's what Lance, I've heard. Lance is a yes. shining beacon in a yeah. terribly written. He plot. tries his best to carry that show, and oh, it is man. not yeah. good. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I've, I haven't actually wanted a two times button until now on Netflix, you know, to watch it two times speed and you just mm -hmm. yeah. slow it down when Lance shows up, you know, then like yep. <laughs> show <laughs> through fast. Is there, is there any part that it's so bad it's good or is it just plain bad? There's I'm, like a few moments that are like so bad it's good where I'm like memeing on them, but it's <laughs> generally just kind of bad and boring. And like there's these uh, like 55 minute episodes and it's just like nothing happens. Yeah. And, there's yeah, a there's a lot that. of high school drama. I mean, there's it features two high school students, but like it's overtly high school in there also. So you're dealing with like a C, CW drama, you know. I don't even know if CW is like yeah, Raccoon like, City High School. Yeah, and then exactly. my, sorry, my favorite character, uh, the girl who looks like Billie Eilish, dresses like Billie Eilish, is introduced <laughs> while a Billie Eilish song is playing and is named Billie. Yeah, amazing, <laughs> just amazing. <laughs> I cannot top that. Uh, but man, when Lance yeah. shows up, he's like, damn, this guy's yeah. good. Even yeah. people who aren't familiar with Lance Reddick, they're like, but Lance, he is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah he's the... He knows how to side eye. When you get hit with the side eye from Lance, you're like, oh, <laughs> oh that is intimidating. He saw my soul. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, what else? What else this week? I played Dinkum. How is it? Mm. Okay. Let's hear. So, th this is my typical start. I started Dinkum. I was on this tiny sand island surrounded by a shark. And I'm like, huh? Mm -hmm. Is this how the game's meant to be? I put my base <laughs> down on the island. And then I was swimming across the shark infested water. Oh, boy. <laughs> Every time. And then I realized, oh, this is like procedurally generated. What? Like this is like a, it's like Animal Crossing. Like it's a random idol every time. And I mm -hmm. just happened to have. I had to restart because it was so. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I was literally in my tent and my main camp was away from each other, and I was crossing this shark water. I just went, nah, I've done this wrong. Your daily commute was to... <laughs> swimming across shark infested water. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Exactly. So like, you started out, daily. and the island was too small because it's like it's a beta, like early access no no like there's multiple like your island has multiple sections mm. and i just ran and we happened to get like the bit that like i stepped off the plane was this tiny sand beach island and the main island which was where i should have been was like across this shark water <laughs> and i didn't know how to play it so as soon as i got off i just dumped my base camp like straight away even though I think it was warning me, like, yeah, make sure you put this in a good Please spot. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> it's it. like, shark, shark, shark. They <laughs> wanted you to explore a bit, have like a real Australian experience, uh, yes, and then set yes. up your base. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. They but wanted to give you a taste Aussie. of Australia. Yeah. Yeah. It's Aussie Animal Crossing, really, I think, from what I've played so far. You liking it? That's okay. As, I think people will like it for sure. It's not, it's, I, I, I was, you know, I play it at night time when I'm, I can't do anything else because Leo's about to wake up. So I'm like, oh, I'll just play a little bit of this. <laughs> Australian Animal Crossing. Yeah. 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 It's not I think it'll be fun. Uh, yeah, it should be. Not too sure. Yeah, that's on Steam Deck. Hey, I saw you playing, Briar. What's the review of Destiny 2 on the Steam Deck? Not super positive so far. <laughs> <laughs> really? Live reaction. <laughs> Yeah, um, the Steam Deck crashed, uh, and then it took me 
Uh, you might have noticed I was checked out of the conversation for a yeah. few minutes because I was the trying deck went to get limp. the Steam Deck to reboot, which it was refusing to do. Were you panicking? <laughs> wow. That's stressful. A little, little panic. A little panic. But it, it rebooted. But it rebooted back to Steam OS, not to Windows OS. So That's when good. I have a little more time, I got to put some time into it and see. I would have been sweating. Like, did I just get kicked out of Destiny yeah, and I'm going to go back and I'm banned? Oh, God. Oh, and from Destiny and Broker's probably be the Deck best the thing that can happen to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all this free time I just got. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that's a yikes. Yeah. So, you know, also, it was taking a really long time to load between areas. Like, real long time. Hmm. Like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Oh, oh wow. What? Okay, so not like there's normal. long yeah, loads, and then there's like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, not yeah. even so, a load. I don't know what that is. Is it the ship like, I, just I, the whole I, time? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like, you know, flying that ship like yeah. real time between planets, <laughs> not quite light speed. <laughs> Have you considered doing the stream version? Stream, you know, like uh, the Xbox Play, you know, stream play. Yeah, I've done that on multiple devices before. Uh, that's doesn't really excite me that much like I, huh. i've been able to do that on my ipad and stuff like that yeah but on the steam deck the it's steam like, link it's like already there it's nice that it's like it's yeah. a unit made for that you just have to deal with now, i really want to be able to play it natively on the steam deck yeah that's that's where it's at like the performance the would probably be better too like yeah. if it, if, it, if i just hope that they i hope that they get it to work on steam deck without having to do windows um yes that's great I agree. That's that's what we want. You're yeah. telling me if it takes me 15 minutes to get into a crucible match and I'm waiting for someone, it's really just bright on his Steam Deck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> waiting for him to load into the game. Hey, everyone's <laughs> waiting for you to load in. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't working perfect. I, I will continue to mess with it. I'll report back uh, next week. See if I've made any progress right. or if it's just not going to work right now. Sounds like it's just problematic. Yeah. yeah, we'll Destiny. see. We'll see. It. I literally just got it going before the show. So, okay. Yeah. I mean, we also did have the the big patch that hit with Solstice. There were a good True. amount of changes in there. Um, one eighty's oh, yeah. got their buff. Mm -hmm. Malfeasance, man. I'm telling you, Malfeasance oh, yeah. is yeah. really good because so currently in the Crucible there is a meta known as pure pain and sadness. Basically, you look out there, every guardian's glowing, they got an overshield, they're glowing from the healing, the healing grenades are coming out, classy restoration's coming out, Lauralee's happening, there's a lot of healing. You know what doesn't care about healing? Malfeasance. You shoot them five times, they explode. Doesn't matter what they're doing. Are they in a super? Are they healing? Doesn't matter. You got a shot five times, you explode. Five in, you're that's down. Good point. I did not think about that. Explosion. But Explosion. that's perfect. Wow. Yeah, the ultimate matter. counter you... for the pain and sadness. It's great. And it's just, it just, it's just great. Like it just, one eighties are just in a better spot now, and Malfeasance is hmm. one of the better ones because Malfeasance has slowly been getting like little buffs every now and then. Like, oh, we buff Malfeasance, we buff. and now with the one eighty buff, it's um, it's it's pretty good. Nice. It's a catalyst, then it'll be. Yeah, I give it a catalyst. Fully, fully bigger booms. Yeah, bigger. Is Malfeasance yeah. the one that we had to kill the meatball to get? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Those were good times, killing that meatball. The stress oh. of like, oh, dear oh, God, it's a meatball, guys, I need to kill. Oh, God. The geez. stress yeah. was so intense. You it see that so you, <laughs> like, you invade, and you're like, oh, they're getting the primeval. You invade, and you see it's the meatball, and you're like, ah, yeah, crap, they got the meatball. <laughs> yeah. We gotta go. It was it was the most intense Gambit's been, let me tell you. That was an intense yeah. moment for mm -hmm. Gambit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, and the good thing is... Scout rifles are good now, too, right? Well, they are, yeah. Um... So, oh, also, they if you have multiple people with malfeasance, it counts towards the booms. Absolutely. So, really? Booms. Oh, really? That's yeah. hilarious. Have a full team of malfeasance. Everyone's exploding. Mm, the malfeasance mm -hmm. okay, squad. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, uh, there's been a lot of jade rabbits, which you never see mm. jade rabbit in the crucible ever. Yeah. Uh, right. But now there's a lot of jade rabbits out there. It's it's a solid gun. Interesting. Okay. That yeah, people were asking me, do you think Briar's played with the rabbit yet? And I was like... Briar plays with the rabbit every day. <laughs> I don't use scout rifles in the uh, Crucible because I'm not a coward. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I do because I'm a I'm not a 
I'm going to tell you what I can get. Yeah, it's uh, scouts are doing pretty good. Historically, uh, I last... have not liked the Jade Rabbit mm, in PvP. I've always mm, been no. ultra annoyed at it. Every time I used it, mm. I've been like, God, why would I use this gun? I, I feel like it had its moments in Destiny in 1, but not in Destiny 2. It never was really that good in Destiny 2. Yeah, there was a moment in D1, but in D2, every time I've always been just walked away with a bad taste in my mouth, like yeah. barf. So I'm going to try it again, though, and see if I get that barf taste. Aesthetically, I always liked the gun, and the gun feels good. It just wasn't killed fast enough. Yeah. What else was there, Watts? You were saying? Um. Oh, the last word, which got nerfed, uh, is currently suffering from a bug that uh -oh. makes it uh, kill faster. <laughs> Okay, it does have a lot. Of uh, what was and it? I think it mouse killing... and keyboard feels better too. I heard whispers that it feels better on mouse and keyboard. Is that right? It's suffering from success, as Pete <laughs> said. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. Um, apparently, it's using people have said it's using the new 180 damage values, it's using 150 oh, wow. damage values. I don't freaking know, but it, it appears to be doing something where it makes it hit super hard. And I think it's is it one crit two bodies that it can kill now? It's, I think it's one crit wow. two bodies. Ooh. It got came down with the case of the Telestos. Yeah, I was gonna say last yeah. words like the Telesto of hand cannons minus physically breaking the game, but it, it, it didn't get vaxxed against the Telesto outbreak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you can imagine trials tomorrow is gonna be Oh, spicy meatball. Oh, God. So much healing, last words, because now like doesn't really matter what import you're using. You, I mean, if something's killing in two bodies, one crit, and it shoots that fast, uh, I don't think it really matters how good it feels. Does that qualify as pain and suffering? Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Pain. Or it'll be a bigger map, and people will just be like two tapping you with Jade Rabbit. Ah, uh, the rabbit, using yeah. Radiance. Yeah. Or they'll be using a 180 because you can if you get Radiant with a 180. And your 180 has Rampage or Kill Clip on it, something like that. You can take people down super fast, and then you'll be, like, two-tapping. Hmm. Very, very cool. Over that. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot of, lot of funky uh, there's good things. Dungeon, there are good dungeon changes, though, in the patch lines, too. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, they stopped the bells being activated by explosions. Oh, uh, nice. So oh. You wouldn't, yeah, you wouldn't yeah, accidentally set off the bell. Yeah, it's massive. Like, if you're... If you're, if you're still trying to do solo flawless, it's it's a huge change to not accidentally sending yourself through the nightmare realm and stuffing up a run. It's really nice. Yeah. I was told by my chat today, Mylon, yeah. that we have to talk about your Caliban's build. Okay. So, oh, yeah, Caliban, <laughs> that's Caliban's... That's immediate, like, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Caliban's is actually fantastic now as well uh, because it... Uh, uh, they fix the bug with it so you can you throw it uh you get radiant you get the kill it gives it back to you straight away so you're basically throwing explosive knives 24 7 and Amazing. when the enemies go down they ignite and it, you literally can throw one knife and the entirety or like just a whole mob will just blow up super yep. fun gives you the if you want to use the explosive barrel it instantly gives you that and then you can th like it's fantastic for ad clear don't keep coming into me chat and tell and asking why I'm not using Calabans because it is not the best for solo force. I don't care what you say. I blew myself up too much with it. <laughs> Mylon, were you blowing yourself up with your um grenade that you get? I mean, it could be that too. I'm not too sure. All That's I know what is I heard. I, <laughs> I heard whisperings that you were using the thing that you weren't supposed to be using. And that you were killing yourself with it. That's what they told Using me. The, the Hobbit dynamite team. bundle for a solo flawless. That is bold. <laughs> Listen, exactly. And, yeah, you know, this I'm, is I'm what I heard. Make... The hobbits came in and were telling on you, Mylan. I'm gonna make a dad's guide to solo flawless. Okay, and it's like <laughs> the foolproof way of not blowing yourself up. And you know, you just that's what it's about: minimizing things that you can do wrong. And I need all the help I can get. And Caliban's is. Super cool, but just not for me. Too spicy. You get too, too much spicy. blowback. Oh, well, maybe. 
Yeah. I, I've heard everyone was just going, I don't even know how it happened, but everyone in chat, the whole chat was filled with Mylan's build was terrible. Mylan's build was terrible. We kept telling him how to fix it. He wouldn't listen to us. It was terrible. Then he yelled because he blew himself up. It was just the whole. <laughs> that sounds like me. <laughs> sounds like what happened. Sounds like the truth. <laughs> this story checks out. <laughs> this story checks out. <laughs> No, but you want to know the real, you want to know the real truth when it comes to doing these runs, okay? Yeah, th this is what everyone needs to understand. Solo flawless is about what you can do consistently, and if you do it on stream, everyone's going to come and go. Um, actually, I use this. I use this. This worked for me. It's like, yeah, that worked for you, but you're not me, and you're not absolutely terrible at the game. And I just need to do what works for me. <laughs> So yes, amazing. Caliban is bad and is definitely not a user error, okay? Don't use it. You're not going to get anywhere with it. Yeah, if you're not familiar <laughs> with Mylan streams, he will get the sweatiest loadout given to him. He'll die using said loadout and he will scream and ban the person. This <laughs> 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 is, is true. I also got told to use this Assassin's Cal. Yeah, it's pretty um, good. No, it's not. It's dog shit. <laughs> It's really good. You go invisible and get health back on knife it. kills, and then you get your knife back. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just sounds like you putting 50 points into stamina in Elden Ring and wondering why you're dying all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Getting mad over mad over your death constantly. <laughs> oh, that was so accurate. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Anything else in those um, patch notes of good things to look yeah, forward there to? Yeah, there was there was stuff and things. Yeah, no, the main bits I think. No, the bits yeah. that affected me. No, the aerial effect. You can farm, you can farm the uh, the red frames now better in the dungeon. Oh yeah, I mean, I tried oh yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already got two two fusion rifles. Oh wow, red okay. Yeah, it's already better. They're definitely higher drop rate. Um. <laughs> Uh, Mylan, I feel like you can give us some info on this um, this reveal that's happening because they're showing the pyramids. You know, they're talking to each other. What's the law? What's the law say about the reveal on August twenty third? What's going on oh, here? Yeah, what's We're going in the on? garden. We're talking to ourselves. What's why happening? Is there, why is there smoky heads coming out of one head? Yeah, what's what's with that? Yeah. So, I do have a Lightfall prediction video coming out on Sunday night. Oh. Mm. Okay. Oh, and I think I've discovered something big. Oh, oh, oh boy. Do you okay, want us to, hold on, hold on. Do you want us to send the so Tate much. Scratchers? <laughs> we yeah. will send the Tate Scratchers. Yeah, too much. <laughs> we throw up the light into the sky. That's the Tate Scratching light. And then because, yeah. all of them come. <laughs> we, we need more Tate Scratchers because here's the thing. As to Cross, he's been coming on my turf. He's a... That's, oh. that's, 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 He's been coming into my territory, okay? Coming on your turf, huh? Making law videos. He's already got a monopoly and everything else, and I don't like it, okay? So I need to have a rebuttal against this light for prediction. So I started researching a little bit of stuff. I thought, you know what? This is good. This, this is really good. Um, I wasn't going to tell everyone, but you've twisted my arm. So if I... I swear to God, if this ends up on Cross's channel before Monday, I'm going to start... Throwing fists. Because I know Forbes article. Sorry, how would you yeah, what about that? a Forbes article? <laughs> if it ends up on Forbes, <laughs> I'm going to pull your taxi. All right. That's fair. Okay. Um, the most overlooked thing I think this season has been the egregore. Okay? Mm, the eroge plants. Yes. Yeah. The fun guy. Fun guys. So, the fun guys. What do you guys know about it? Callus speaking through the the, the ship because of the it's fungus. Communication. Right. It's a uh -huh. form of stasis, but impure. Or it's a form of darkness, but impure, where stasis is yep. like pure. So Eris Morn and Drifter did some experimentation with it. And Eris thinks it's made like a synaptic network. And it's connected the pyramid ships, and it all seems to be going back to a single point. Guess Ooh. what single point is? The witness. The witness, exactly. Right, mm -hmm. this is where we start to get into like light fall territory. Goes back to the witness. Okay, so that's one thing it does. The other thing it does is it is on the Leviathan, and it feeds on the psychology of death. 
right. right? The moments before death, and that's how it grows so quickly. And we go through there and we kill everything. That's why they're so doing all the clones, right? And we've clones been feeding it. Slaying the clones feeding and feeding it. it. Uh-huh. Correct. If you go back and read the OG lore about Egregore, because this has been in the game for a very long time, since 2018, mm -hmm. uh, when we got the Drifter lore, and he went to an icy planet. He went to an icy planet, and he was looking for ways to develop thorn-like weapons that would eat the light, that would suppress the light. Ooh. And that's where he discovered the these creatures that were captured in these monoliths. And they drained the light, and the Drifter was the only one of his crew to escape the planet. He actually killed all his crew. He kit-bashed his ghost to have the technology to capture these creatures, and he put them on the derelict. And that is what you see when you go into Gambit. There's that is actually so Egregore Drifter. actually Egregore behind it, right? Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm, so his mm -hmm. ghost has a mechanism to capture Egregore, okay? And we didn't really know it was Egregore until we got the... Dead Man's Tail uh, presage mission, and we saw the the, the Egregore yeah. on the ship, and we got the name mm -hmm. Egregore, and we're like, oh, that looks the same as yeah. the stuff behind yeah. the Drifter. Drifter's and fungi problem. And then in this problem. season, there is a lore tab where Eris is like, wait, you've had this for years? He's like, yeah, nobody ever asked. It's sitting in my <laughs> ship. You walk past it. <laughs> and so he's the one that starts giving Eris the advice. Yeah, he starts giving advice on what to do with it, which is Eris burns it and she has his visions. And this is how she works out uh, the synaptic network. She's smoking, smoking it? She's, she's smoking she, the juice. She, she rolls it up and she makes a it. fat blunt, smokes the egregore, <laughs> and gets visions of the witness. Uh huh. Uh huh. So This is how religion starts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty soon, Drifter's gonna sell it, sell all these different strands of the Egregore. Yeah, 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 it's it's now legal in the tower. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the last thing is, if you breathe it in, if you breathe in the spores, it connects you to the the system, the the network. The network. Right? Yeah. So let's put all these facts together. Ah. Uh, it can suppress. It can suppress the light. If you breathe it in, it connects you to a darkness network that leads back to the witness. Uh, I forgot my other facts. <laughs> and <laughs> this one, I've got a video on it. <laughs> smoking too much egregore. Yeah. You smoke too much egregore. Um, but think about that. And it's spreading through the helm and other places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 that's right. And it feeds on death. What do guardians do? We constantly die and revive. So yeah. is this not just a big setup for life? We literally have this fungi that leads back to the back to the witness that feeds on death and that can suppress the light boom light form. Mm. seems a little dangerous for us mm. seems very dangerous question yeah. then has Wait. has gambit yeah. also been essentially like an underlining ploy to feed this egregore that he's captured uh drifter it's... says he uses it to develop the um the prime evils that's how drifter has like fake taken it was from that tech from the what he developed with his ghost, that's how he can like s has summoned dark moats and stuff like that. Hmm. So I wrote about this a couple weeks ago, where I didn't do that lightfall connection. Likely but... story. I'm not taking this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> this is what I'm asking you. Is is so I just thought you... last week, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, no, with all that you just said, what do you think the chances are that? Egregore could be like the basis for the subclass, like the poison subclass everyone keeps talking about. Like, I know it's mostly a communications thing, but I feel like Eris and Drifter studying it could be like, how can we weaponize this against the yeah, thing it they, created? They, it, they, they talk about it like it's stasis too. They make the, they make the like you said before, that it's similar to stasis. So it's definitely in the darkness. Well, you, you said sort that, of realm of abilities. You said the Drifter was trying to make weapons like the Thorn with this material, yep. right? So it yep. is essentially yep. the thorn element is Egregore. Yeah. Or the basis yep. of it is. Is that how he made malfeasance? Yeah. Yeah, it suppresses the light as well. So um, it has a background there. And obviously the end of this season, which might be why this, you know, probably more evidence to how this might link to light for a future storyline is the radio call at the end of the season is Eris Morn and Drifter, right? They're mm -hmm. talking yep. and they, they go back to meet on the, 
on the uh, pyramid ship. They smoke some the Luna one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah, you know what? Let's 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 la- blaze it up again. See if we have any more vision. Four twenty drifter. Mm. <laughs> and the revealed trailer for the event thingy has, of course, pyramids. It's got Eris going and talking to the statue. It's got the witness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I think it's space. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I think it's one of those subtle things in this season. Not even subtle. It's like obvious, but it's not really spoken about. Like it's in the Leviathan. You, everyone saw it spreading through the helm, but it hasn't really had much attention, so to speak. I, I feel like and that would so be a giant the red guards flag. don't even notice it. They're just like, ah, this is weird. Yeah, like, why has no one said anything about the helm? Like, it's yeah, when just, I saw it just, spreading, I was like, are you kidding me? You got a fungus problem. <laughs> Let me get this is bad. Flamethrower out. Yeah, yeah. burn yeah. the ship. This thing is spreading. <laughs> Hold up, and, hold up. Um, we can smoke this. Maybe we can leave it around a little bit. <laughs> no, wait, wait, never mind, never mind. <laughs> it's natural. It's natural. It's a fungi. <laughs> it's a fungi. I get visions. I feel good when I smoke it. Come on. Um, Cal in chat said uh, there was a line in the Sever mission where Eris tells us to be careful about breathing in the spores from the aroge plants. So that has a new meaning to it as well if she's doing that and she's connecting to the witness network. Don't yeah. we have to do that to get through the barriers? Isn't it like punching the spores until they <laughs> yes, shoot? Yes, true. Yes. And then you yeah. Go yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. It's like, don't high on the supply. Uh, Hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to punch it anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Donk. <laughs> well, that's really fascinating. There you go. Now you, you are now legally, contractually bound to watch my video when it comes out Sunday night. And what is yeah, the key article? article? Okay, perfect. What? And yeah. read Paul Tassie's Forbes article. <laughs> Forbes summary of Mylan's video. Yes. What is the, the keyword that we have to post in your comment section to verify uh, that we've... That we've uh, 420 came... Egregore or something like that. Egregore Kush? Uh, Egregore Kush. <laughs> sure. We all also accept Eroge Kush. I would actually uh-huh. prefer that. Thank you. Different strain. Copy that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all I've got really I don't know what else um, people have been asking I don't know what else we would take away from the trailer they're all they're all like end scenes we've already seen before right the the pyramid ship lighting up the yeah there was like a recap the witness right? yeah I don't I don't really I don't know what else to take from it. people are sort of quite excited by it but yeah, it's, really it's, have like, it's all just like a recap it. it's like there's nothing new in yeah. there right I mean yeah and it's yeah. the same dialogue as the right. end of it's a witch queen and it's basically the dollar from the end of witch queen right it's just the yeah. witness speaking yeah. with different uh visuals so. was that witch queen or was it uh beyond light it was a witch queen it was a witch queen oh, yeah my it's when the witness first we see him for the first time yeah yeah right so yeah yeah i mean, I mean it's I exciting think, are, we, are we working towards the witness is that going to be life or i guess that's the main thing is like yeah, because then we have another one after that, right? What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the final shape. That? Yeah, final shape. Yeah. Well, Where? actually, that's interesting because if they're using the aroge plants and that can get rid of the light and it's called lightfall, then... Everyone's I guess it would be about the do the whole red war thing again where we lose our life. We're losing we're losing it to the plants. <laughs> Maybe we get plant power. Yeah. We're now empowered yeah, by the power plants. I plant. literally... Yeah. That is my theory, is... Poison based on Egregore er, subclass. That is my running theory, but we'll see. It actually be cool to have like all, all ga- you know how Stasis has the crystals. It would be cool to have something that like plant vines, yeah, or, like, like vines, like, like fungi I mean. spores, like because the idea before this was like, oh, we're gonna get like hive soul fire or something, which would be like I don't know green fire. So that's not like super exciting. I would much rather have like shooting vines out of your arms and think like really random kind of wacky stuff like that as opposed to just like different color fire that would be cool mm. i like that yeah and then uh, maybe even do you think mind control could happen with like the spores you know since it gets into the psyche like i don't know if the ai could handle <laughs> could handle being mind controlled that much i mean maybe sometimes yeah, you're right we have friendly ai we've but, had more uh, al- we've had more allies recently 
good yeah good yeah they boys. around yeah. doing things yeah. they did that in d1 you remember the artifact from the um the house oh. yes i was like do you remember am I yeah, imagining yeah, this you used to be able to do that yeah, yeah you'd, right. like, I forgot you'd that. punch him i just remember them not calm. doing like any damage though yeah they just turned him for like 15 seconds or something like that if i recall yeah um yeah, it's a it's exciting. I mean, we got a bit to wait, and then obviously it'll be sometime next year. I'm assuming February when they when it drops. So we got um we got some events to reveal. I would really like to have a nice build up with the next season and then the following season to lead it into so. this. Like that would be so would satisfying, mm-hmm. right? The the six month season of the Lost was not ideal. Like I get there yeah. was a delay, but like yeah. I mean, it was like three months of kind of empty space and then we had like the very final stuff that happened at the end but it was a long gap in between so hopefully if we just have two normal seasons it won't feel like that yeah can you tell your dog to be so not be so cute in the background it's very distracting (laughs) she's like very sad that she's like trapped in here (laughs) oh uh i'll let her out soon though okay question i just saw clock talking about a vex expansion in chat what if it leads, what if we, we go to the witness and then it leads to some ultimate Vex thing that gets unlocked because we've done something yeah, with the witness? I agree with that. You know, and then, because, yeah. like, the Vex are some crazy time-space continuum, you know, like, evil so evil it hates evil type of crap. You know, like, they, they got to tie that up in some way if you're going to have yeah. this witness thing. That's like, true. You can't have the Vex not be a part of this equation of the witness having all of it balanced, Right. Only thing is, I feel like Rolk and the Witness really like revitalized interest overall in Destiny, just because it was like a new species sort of deal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas I feel like if you finished Lightfall or like defeating the Witness and or other something like that, and you go back to the Vex, it would feel. Well, this is the eternal now. like. There's no real new enemy race problem. Like I remember when I first saw Rolk, and I'm like. Oh my god, like there's gonna be a whole race of these things. Then it's like, oh, by the way, to become a disciple, you have to exterminate your whole <laughs> race. So there's yeah. no more of him. So it's like he's the last I, I do think Destiny needs something like that someday, but I mean we've been saying this for, you know, six years at this point. So I don't I just I don't know if they're ever gonna go that far and we're gonna keep seeing maybe just modified, you know, score and modified fallen and, and taken like that. Like I would love to see that someday. I just don't know if they're ever gonna get there at this point. Mm-hmm. The bail, the famous, you know, mystery race that we were supposed to uh, see like three years ago, but mm. it's very witnessy. Witness has to have some sort of like squad, right? I think he just has like individual disciples in the pyramids, right? Isn't that like kind of how yeah. he works? I mean, when the pyramids showed up, I was like, oh, there's going to be a bunch of things that come out of this and attack us, but that's. Not how it works. They're like paracausal pyramids. So right, right. Uh, that doesn't really pan out. Yeah, more. What you say about the guardians. disciples? Yeah. Yeah, I think there'll be what a disciple per pyramid or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Because Callus is like, sort of all be going into a races, pyramid. Like maybe unique races, theoretically. Yeah, it's it's almost like the how Callus made the shadows of Callus. Yeah. Well, the Vex stuff is interesting because, like, I wonder... So Bungie's been on this, like, really intense storytelling kick lately, which I think has been really good. I just wonder if they have figured out, like, how to crack the Vex from a storytelling perspective because they just exist as this thing that is so far kind of outside all the other enemy races. Like, we had the whole Fallen thing with Mithrax and, um, you know, Savathun with the Hive and and Kaido with the Cabal and, like... You could write stories within that, but like writing a Vex story with like Vex characters, like it doesn't. Like, I'm, I'm wondering how they can do that uh, rather than just have them be like kind of background fodder type stuff. Background but, machines. Yeah, because we never had like a Vex. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if you actually had like a a Vex villain that was talking and like? like yeah. So people, people said like Ash, Ash, Ashermir like is now a Vex or whatever. Like he was transmuted into the Vex network and showed up as a harpy and stuff. So like, I certainly think they could bring him as a character, you know, as a gateway to that. But like, yeah, like exactly. Like who are the Vex villains? Like what do they want other than weird Vex things like exterminating the sun or whatever? Like I, it's, it's, it's a lot harder, I think, to 
maybe craft stories around them, I think. But yeah, it's I've, tough I've to really always like, wondered. Gonna... I've always wondered if like that was the point of everybody kind of like teaming up, but, like how we're slowly like forming this like huge team of like all the what were enemy races is that so we can finally take on the Vex like together. Yeah. Maybe like that they could be the third essentially the third army. I mean they kind of already are whereas like the witness is directly controlling the taken and the score now essentially and then Callus is some of his cabal clones but they're not really like a major force but then the Vex I mean when we first got to the uh, the pyramid stuff in the first place the Vex were kind of the front lines of the darkness's army with like garden of salvation stuff that's like the whole the whole the Vex raid so they're they're kind of in the mix there and and serving them to some extent i don't i don't know all the lore behind that and why that happened but they seem pretty connected well, i was gonna to say i think already. if they do something to the vex it's probably going to come back to the original storyline which is this idea that they were created from the black garden originally to in, restore balance that that the balance with light and dark was broken and the offshoot of that included vex who was meant to restore the pattern and that's why they're so obsessed with the pattern. Um, but they have evolved since then and changed. But hmm. wouldn't the pattern be could... the final shape? Well, no. So the final the final shape is the opposite of the pattern because that was oh. that's basically darkness winning. That's like creating a universe by cutting away the light uh, or cutting away all the things that the light does. And you know, you you form the final shape through death and destruction, which is like the hive philosophy. Hmm. Like if I kill you, you deserve to die, and that's that's how we end up with the final shape. We we cut it down. Um, so I almost feel like the Vex would be against the final shape, but then they have changed to the point where they just want to be the Vex and every timeline has the Vex and that's, they just persist in so time so, and space. Like surprise, they show up and they're on our team when we're fighting. The... I, you, you could definitely, I think, manipulate Vex tech to like avoid the final shape. Sure. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. It'd be quite the twist. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Cool some, to have uh, like Twitter a questions. Vex person. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was stuff about Banshee and the Twab, and that was about it. They're buffing his rep gains. Yes. That's it. <laughs> the yeah. end. Banshee's getting the old buff from dismantling stuff. Mm -hmm. Dismantling and bounties. They bounties. Bounties. Yeah. So. I don't know. You'll probably reset them, set them once per season. There's no banshee like bonus weeks though, like there are with all the other vendors. So that's another reason it takes forever. Yeah. All right, Briar, let them rip. All right, I gotta bring them up first. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, some guy named Log says, I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thanks to Paul for backhanding fuckwits online. Briar, if you read this, you are my favorite. Teft is my favorite. If you don't, the power is yours. <laughs> <laughs> that could be referring to like six things in the past two weeks. So I don't yeah. even know. <laughs> yeah, you've been a good Twitter follow lately. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been some more on the internet. So that's yeah. We're it's not going to have to worry about lack of content. We just, we just bring up Paul's Twitter each yeah. week. Discuss. <laughs> my, my villain arc is the past two weeks here. <laughs> taking no shit. See which gamers and gamer developers that uh, you've uh, been... Between Dr. Disrespect <laughs> and like 40 follower random person, I'm just... Yeah. Oh yeah, Over I forgot it. about Dr. Disrespect. Oh, That's probably all calmed down now. You've just replaced that with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Well done. <laughs> Lord Beerus has uh, uh, five questions, so we'll do a rapid fire. Sugary or salty snack? Sugar. Salty. Both. Depends on my yeah. mood. I need a blow. I do like a little bit of sugar. That's usually what I'll do. I'll get something sweet. I'll have something not sweet. Yeah. And then that's my snack. That's pretty Salted good. Salted caramel. <laughs> Bacon or sausage? Bacon. Bacon. I've had bacon. some really good plant-based bacon or sausage. There's been some really good, yeah. like breakfast really sausage, plant-based alternatives. Good yeah. sausage, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, chicken or steak? Steak. <laughs> I know steak. what my own's gonna say. <laughs> I gotta have chicken. You know this. I'm allergic. <laughs> steak. 
Uh, to be or not to be? To be. To be. Not to be. Not to be. Yep. yep. <laughs> Just gonna. Ooh, okay. Not to be. <laughs> Sounds weirdly really dark, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the Boogie the Nine says, "When you and your significant other go out to dinner, do you sit on the same side of the table or opposite sides of the table?" Opposite. Yeah, usually opposite. Opposite. I I always have sat opposite, but my wife likes to sit on the same side of the table. And I don't really understand it. It doesn't bother me. I just don't understand why. Well, <laughs> she's like very looking weird. at you. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. That could be it. <laughs> I think I, I, I really I don't know. I, I I've asked her. She doesn't really have a reason. She just like she likes to sit next to each other too, <laughs> like in a booth. You know what I'm saying? Like not in two chairs next to each other. She likes to be like sitting next to each other. It's really I don't really understand it. I think it. if you're in a booth, it's more acceptable. But at yeah. a standard table, same side is. <laughs> like it's easier to have the conversation while you're eating if it's like in front of you, right? Because if someone's yeah. talking, you can look. If someone and someone's over here, I can't eat and look over here at the same time as possible. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. I, I, it might be she likes to watch people. And she likes to be able to. Ooh, like, she likes to go, hey, Briar, you see that oh, hell, dumbass? <laughs> it might be that, yeah. <laughs> uh, people definitely. watching is good. Depends, yeah. I guess where you. It depends where you are. If it's good people watching, I would. I would accept sitting next to each other. Okay, I think it depends on what you're doing. If you're having a full dinner, then I feel like you sit opposite. If you're getting coffee, true, you sit next to each other. True, and right? you people okay. watch. Yeah. Often we get drinks. We don't get dinner. We'll get drinks. Oh, okay. That's different. That's fine. Because that's more like at a bar, you know? Like sitting yeah. next to yeah. each other. Yeah. Uh, uh, Black Zard says, One of my favorite things from this season was the expansion of Zavala's character. Who are y'all top two characters you'd like to see more from in terms of story? You can only pick two. I mean, Eris is probably my top one. Like, I just want to see more Eris all the time. Drifter yeah, is good. Yeah, I feel like and after this conversation, revived Rasputin, <laughs> mm. who yeah. speaks English. I want Ikora. She's literally yeah, lifting Ikora. the EDZ up for us to just like play on. It's because she's on that good Kush. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> she's been smoking a lot she's of wares. Hang out. We out. hear how badass she is in any mission we've played with her. She is super badass. So I would love to hear yeah. more about her. Yeah, what I about who was who was a hunt who was a Cade wannabe in the um Fell Winter's Shiro, Peak? Shiro Four? Yeah, Shiro, Shiro Four. What about that yeah. dude? What's he up to lately? Who cares? Uh, he gave us a trespasser <laughs> again. That was his gun. <laughs> just out bandies, right? oh, I think that's he's right. dead. That's how we have the gun. He might be dead. Oh, really? <laughs> who killed him and have his gun now, yeah. Is he dead? I don't know. Crow dead. killed him. Hold on, that's that's a long video. Hold on, I gotta go. Is Shiro dead? Three question mark. Pro killed question mark, exclamation mark. <laughs> uh, Josh says, question for Mylan, but all you can chime in since the DCP lore is so strong. Is it really? possible Lightfall brings a new enemy race? <laughs> uh, okay, go chime me. <laughs> uh, it's going to be the, the sex plants. They're going to come and sex, plants. sex you up. Yep. I want uh, sex. Dale, they're up. coming this time. Yeah. They're that coming song on your starts playing. They're coming on your turf, Mylan. <laughs> they're coming on my turf. <laughs> the sex plants. <laughs> <laughs> Jasper Cohen says, Do you think it's a mistake matter. for Bungie to have players go blind to Arc 3.0? Shouldn't they set up some expectations to avoid a yes. day one disappointment like Solar came across initially? I disagree with the second part of that, but I do think that they should reveal a lot of it ahead of time. I, it's just, it was such like a cluster to try and like instantly figure out everything on the fly, but also be doing the new story content. So like, it was like, it was a weird balance between like trying to like do the missions and stuff, but then also being like setting up your solar build at the exact same time and like figuring out what everything did. It just, it was a lot to process all dumped at once. And like, I would rather have some picture going in. I'm not saying like, I don't want to like critique it and be like, this sounds like this is going to suck. Like, which I'm sure people would do, but 
Um, like I don't, I don't think there was a disadvantage to, sh to talking about void as early as they did. So I don't really understand this desire to like keep something like this until the live I, game. Launches. I think the issue with void is everyone sort of made these builds in their head, and then it didn't play out as they wanted it to, and then got all whiny about it. So Warpy, I don't know. Wasn't like the first impressions of void 2.0, like pretty good. I mean, everyone was complaining about Hunter, well, I thought. But then, well, I think everyone was like, Warlock's going to be so good. And then <laughs> Warlock wasn't so good. Well, and then, but then with Solar, they just sprung some stuff on us where it's like, by the way, your war Warlocks are about all this air stuff. And like, that's all they kind of have. And then it took a couple more yeah, weeks I, to I'm figure out like actual good builds. The, what? Because I sort of missed the uh, the impression of Solar because uh, Leah decided to come right on the the day that it released. So Very inconvenient. what, what, yeah. what happened? Very inconvenient of him, yes. Mm. I mean, everyone, like everyone, first, thought, everyone thought Solar like was, like, it. dramatically underpowered for, like, the first, at least the first few days because it didn't instantly, you know, come it's alive like, like Void. But then people figured out, you know, builds and people figured out that Incandescent was a thing and Classy Restoration was a thing. So, like, I don't even know what's what's more powerful now because Void lost a bunch of artifact mods. So, like, it, yeah. it was just very strange to kind of just have to figure out all this on the fly and be like, okay, right. what is... What are scorched stacks? Like, why can't I track how much things are scorched? Like, it, why it is also, Ignite different? Than it was it was just, it was very confusing, I thought, to try and just have it all dumped in immediately. Yeah, it was also compounded by the fact that you were dealing with the aerial stat change. So, like, the sandbox had changed, and you're dealing with what's good and bad in Solar 3.0. So, I think all that kind of blurred into it, because yeah. reception wasn't glowing. Yeah. Like I really enjoy Solo right now, and um, but I also got to it quite late, and also I think it, just like Void, it is propped up heavily by artifact mods during that season. So it's going to be interesting once, once you get Arc three point because it will probably have some some artifact mod during that season that makes it, you know, better than the other subclasses. It'd be interesting once all those artifact mods are gone. Like yeah. what comes to the surface of just the build itself, like the 3.0 is by itself. I think they're going to keep rotating though. Like I think you're we'll going to just keep changing all it. rounds back eventually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think they'll cycle stuff in, but I think void lost more in the artifacts, which there were like four or five really good void artifact mods. Whereas solar is like pretty much just classy restoration is, is the main one. And then maybe one of the ones that exotics think... generate wells or something. But like, I think void had a lot more better, artifact mods in general then solar is going to lose like class restoration is big but yeah but don't, don't I, you think, I think that's going to be really strong a lot of builds with not being able to heal it depends like the heal on demand for like something like hunter is just insane but like a lower light titan is still going to be pretty strong in solar 3.0 just yeah. by itself like i mean I don't yeah think I, that is going to be totally trashed i think it's going to be much more reliant i i do i do have concern with ink with how like add density is because I like it because there's lots of ads because you need to use solar and void to, to deal with them. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like uh, for the Titan, it's okay with like Lorley and you just have, in, you know, constant hammers and you're making sunspots. It's fine. Uh, with the Hunter, I think a lot of people will switch to Assassin's Cowl because you're just going to get the base at the same effect as Classy Restoration. Um but I'm concerned you're going to be restricted to certain exotics if you're trying to do hard content to get your survival up. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Like, I'm very interested to see how it goes without... Or if they just introduce like, other artifact mods that sort of direct you to a certain subclass each sort of season. <laughs> on Hunter, though, it's it's crazy on Hunter now. It's like worm husk, old worm husk, even better on demand every... like eight seconds or whatever you get your dodge down to like yeah, yeah. it's i never had anything like that i think they do need more healing options but i I'm, I'm not surprised that this is not like a permanent thing for them uh taylor crafton says with how much paul hates blue engrams they feel like a chore to me too do you think we'll have to wait until after the final shape dlc for those to be removed as drops again cheers to paul and the dcp crew okay i don't I don't understand. Like, I know we've had this whole like Bungie's getting over criticized thing, and like one of the one of the things they keep saying is, "Here's how to give like valuable feedback." 
And one of the things they say is don't propose solutions. I agree with that about a lot of things. And I know that development is, is very hard in aspects that I don't understand. Except for blues. <laughs> because there are so <laughs> many, like, just common sense things for the problem of blues that I do not understand why they will not or cannot implement them. Like, the, the main three are stop dropping blues when you hit the soft cap and they stop being useful. An auto dismantle option, which, like, literally... Marvel's Avengers and Outriders had on like day one for like only pick up, you know, loot above a certain rarity or just even the most basic thing of all time. Blues don't go to the postmaster like any of these would be just like a, you know, 90 percent improvement over over the problem. And like they do, they do so many other quality of life fixes in this game. And I do not understand their obsession with like refusing to change pretty much anything about blues the only change mm -hmm. they made is that they don't give you like two or three blues at the end of playlist matches now but like playing the the reason i'm I'm like reheated about this is because solstice makes you play all these activities and if you're doing all these world activities like strikes and dares and like you just amass so many blues from everything yeah. and like you have to stop what you're doing every two activities to clear out yourself clear out your postmaster and like it never changes. Like this is a very like real problem that affects all players. That yeah. like I I just don't get why they're married to blues to the degree they are. Yeah. And in D one, at what at what point did green stop dropping? Eventually, they did. Didn't they? Didn't they have an auto dismantle, or was it was it when you hit a certain level? I couldn't remember if it was I, if you hit a, if you hit a. I think in vanilla, or... it was once you hit a certain level, it was only blues that were dropping, but. I also feel like at a certain point they had. I feel like there was an auto dismantle for when you ran over a green, right? They did do auto dismantle eventually. I just didn't know if that was triggered by your level or something. But, um, like, so I, and it I think was there. Are, are more of a problem than greens ever were back yeah. then. So I, I just, I don't. I the technology just is there. Understand. Of course, they'd have yeah, to yeah. put in a toggle on there. So it would, like, it would, you could choose because I'm sure some people want to. Maybe keep blues for some specific reason because they're trying to get some. In Maybe they just want you going to the postmaster, which is right next to the Eververse door. Oh my god, you nailed it! <laughs> just to to arrive and be furious that all your good loot is gone and it's full of blues. Oof. Yeah, it puts you it puts you in the Called mood to it. buy something. <laughs> uh, Landy McBlanderson says, "Which of the following is the best marsupial? The kangaroo, the wombat, the bandicoot, the koala, the opossum." Or the Tasmanian Devil, the cutest. What was the question? Which is a uh, uh, the best, uh, best, the best. I feel like it's not going to be the what? possum. But... Tasmanian I mean, the Devil Tas is extinct, right? It probably was uh, the best. Tasmanian Tiger is extinct. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tasmanian Devil is what Taraba's uh, modeled after. Okay. It's yeah. got a very, very uh, strong bite. I think it's. Maybe I'll be corrected. It is uh, one of the strongest, like, pounds per square inch or something like It's bite. Just take off your arm. It's like this wow. tiny rat thing. Mm. <laughs> just bite That's your the arm. Best. That's what we're saying. <laughs> that doesn't sound like the best. Tiny rat yeah. that can bite your arm off. <laughs> Nature's crazy. shears. Yeah. I've heard yeah. that Australian possums look different to the possums we're thinking about. So Our we need to bring up are right. actually cute. All right, so show us. Bring it up. I look that up. All right. Okay, hold on. I mean, I think possums are also cute. In general. I mean, koalas, oh, I would have said yes, better. but now that I know that they're riddled with STDs, okay. I kind of don't want to <laughs> touch <Yeah>. them. <laughs> Bring it up, Mylan. Give us yeah, that I got possum. Why are your possums so much better? That's not fair. Look how cute our possums are. Cute possums. Uh, Can you bring one up? Zoom it in. <laughs> or is this like an Australia thing where they like will secretly kill you? Yeah, they do they sound. They do sound um, like awful. I would say cuter uh, than our apostles, but not necessarily cute on their own merit. Okay, now Google oh, American cute. Awesome cute. and tell me it's not cute. That's cute. Yeah, that's cute. I don't know. You, I don't know I'd, why your possums. Why your possums so fair? I'd like. Uh, I think they're cute. Well, they're not that cute. They're not Australian possum cute. Right. <laughs> I like the little walk they do. They have like a little huddle. Yeah, they got a waddle. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Waddle Tim. That's yeah. pretty I good. like the Waddle. Seeing them. I think it's the, the, waddle, the tail please. that's the real turn off that like nasty looking. Yeah. Tail. They got a thick rat tail. Yeah. yeah. That's very cute. Look at him. Yeah. That, that, that is pretty cute. That's some, <laughs> some Disney character. Yeah. Some Pixar yeah. character right there. They they sound feral though when they do fight at nighttime. They, oh, yeah. That yeah. does sound like someone being murdered. Yeah. A lot of fighting. Are they the like, pick, if you're then? if you're camping the in the bush, it is actually terrifying. You hear <laughs> fighting, you're like, huh? Axe axe murderer. Can you do like a like a Russian nesting doll with like all these marsupials? Like just keep putting the smaller one in the next biggest one until you have all of them. Yes, in Wait, each other's po- you, yes, pockets. Then it's yeah. the, the capybara or whatever. The big Did one. you say platypus capybara. as well? Was the platypus in there? Not on the list. Wait, is a capybara a mar- one of these two? No, I think that's, that's a different. different country. That's a rodent. No. And they are freaking amazing. Yeah. Enormous. South America. Right? Capybara. Yeah. Adorable. They're great. Giant rats. I got to pick kangaroo just because of the sheer number of hilarious videos on, on YouTube featuring kangaroos. The boxing. Boxing, uh, giving noogies to like people dressed in like you know furry outfits. Kangaroo Jack, all sorts of good some stuff. movies. Kangaroo yeah. Jack, the classic, <laughs> the classic. <laughs> Ace Dog says, "When is Paul Tassie joining full time so we can offer him as a sacrifice to the cannibal Watts?" Mm. And I look forward to DCP Live's Arc 3.0 informational preview with the Bungie devs. In the time I haven't been here, do we eat more people than just Briar now? No, is... we just okay. eat Briar. That's no, a Briar exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. That's offensive. Yep. Or a compliment. <laughs> Canceled. I think he said expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah, I mean, big costs. Yeah, you can eat me, but it's going to be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I found you a pretty penny. Uh,. Tam the Shattered says, Paul, I'm sorry if this question sounds inconsiderate, but I've always been interested in how you got into journalism, as in what were your first steps into this field of work? Big fan of you and the DCP crew. Why would that be inconsiderate? It's just a normal question. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, so I, I didn't like what study journalism or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I So I, I have like a random economics degree, but I, I started working for my school paper uh, back at the University of Michigan, and I was doing movie reviews for them. And this was kind of when like blogging was invented because I'm very old and I just really liked the idea that you could just write something and publish it on the internet. Uh, so I got hired by a website startup and then eventually that got bought by Forbes and that was like 12 years ago. So I kind of lucked wow. out because you been working I not really for predict Forbes that. For 12 years? It's been, yeah, it'll be 12 years this fall, I think. Wow. So, and uh, yeah, it's, I used to write like three articles a week. Now I write like twenty five, so or something like that. So actually, no, it's like no, it's thirty five because seven days times five. Yeah. Um, so everyone has their own path. There's not like a set path, and I don't think you need like X or Y degree. Um, I think just it's a lot of learning by doing and just writing to kind of establish a, a base of mm-hmm. work for yourself. I I got a question. How do you do that yeah. much volume? You know, yeah, you went from three a week yeah. to. You, 35 a week. Right? You kind of make it a science where I know both like what will kind of be um, stories people are interested in that will be both things I want to write about, but also things that will like potentially track well on social media or Google. Um, I do not do crazy long in-depth stuff other than like very rarely now. So like a lot of my pieces you'll see are 450, 550, 600 words. They're not like super long and i can do those pretty pretty quick now with yeah but it still takes a bunch of research right like you so unless you i guess you're keeping up to date all the time really so you don't have to do as much well it depends so like if 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 it's something like destiny where i'm using like my afternoons or something to keep up with destiny so i know everything that's going on in destiny at any given time that's an article a day every day that i can do based on my own knowledge and then just generally kind of keeping abreast of of stuff in gaming i i do have to kind of focus in specific areas where if like, you know, I, I know everyone's going to be talking about Stranger Things. So I make sure to watch that. And then I, you know, read all these interviews and do all these things. And I can get, you know, five, six articles out of that. I can't be an expert in like literally everything. So like you'll see some games I just will never cover, even if they're popular. I almost never write about Call of Duty because I can't 
keep current with that or Warzone or like, you know, World of Warcraft. So I have to really kind of hone in on stuff. And then the ultimate hone in has been Destiny, obviously. And that's kind of how I built my base. But then that lets me write about, you know, a, a good amount of stuff in my wheelhouse too. So it is it is hard to write kind of nonstop, but it is even harder now. And you've also got your YouTube channel on the side too. That was something I started because um, I felt like I, I kind of felt one dimensional, I guess, just only writing. And this, this show actually was a big contributing factor because, you know, talking for two hours on video was not something I had done really, you know, ever before being on the show a bunch of times uh, and a couple other podcasts. So it seemed like something I could do. And my, my videos are, I would say much low, more low effort compared to all of the content creators in the space. Cause they're like one take things I can, I can get done in an hour. Um, but uh, I, I felt like if you're a journalist now, you kind of need to have a presence in multiple places. And I wanted something that was kind of my thing and not yeah. necessarily yeah. attached to Forbes too. So sure, yeah. it's it's trying to grow all this stuff in parallel and I, it can get a little overwhelming, but I'm trying to trying to balance everything. Can right. you stop being so productive? You make me feel bad. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> slowing five down articles sure. a week. Come on, my land. I need <laughs> my, my, oh, my more 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 video done. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mason uh, Blue says, what is the best chicken sandwich you've had so far? And is it a Nashville hot chicken sandwich? Follow-up question. Mm -hmm. What is the best bun to use for a chicken sandwich? Would that technically be a nut bush chicken sandwich? Yeah. I Interesting. So. Yeah. More research needed, I think. <laughs> whole yeah. whole wheat nut bush. The bush chicken bread. sandwiches. I've never heard of a Nashville hot chicken sandwich. I don't really know what's in that. Is that a sexual act? <laughs> Sounds Nashville like hot chicken sandwich. <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> uh, I don't know what the best bun is for a chicken sandwich. Isn't it just, don't but, you have it with like bread rather than a bun? Uh, or do you call sam like, would it be a burger if it's in a bun? Or do you call that a no, sandwich? That's an eternal international debate i think but if you if you put chicken in a bun you call it a burger here it'd be a chicken burger no chicken burger it's always wow. called well, chicken burger. No. sometimes we call them chicken burgers i guess you could call it a chicken burger if you ground the meat up and made it look like a burger patty oh like turkey burgers and yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that would be yeah. acceptable i mean it's i'd still, still weird, give though. you the side eye but i mean it'd be acceptable ground chicken it's just a weird <laughs> thing i've never been a fan yeah. <laughs> no i'm not yeah. either just ground up some chicken. And I'm like, uh, oof. yeah. I also don't like deli sliced chicken. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is. It's just oh, not. Because yeah. you think about salmonella. That's why. Well, now I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Potato bun, maybe. The best chicken yeah. sandwich I've ever had, though. I mean, chicken sandwiches don't even rate on like the best sandwiches scale I've ever had. So it's it's hard to even like pick one. Chicken sandwich. <laughs> I was like, chicken. Get your chicken. chicken nah, get, get out of here. Get out of here with your chicken sandwich. Give me a steak. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, Blaze says, who was the last person on the podcast to touch grass? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, wasn't me. I changed. <laughs> I had to Thanks, uh, Briar. sharpen my mower blades today and then mow the lawn. That's, that's pretty grass. I knew it was Briar. Grass. Yeah. <laughs> I got the grinder out. That was fun. It was like 95 degrees, and I'm like spraying hot metal sparks Absolutely all over the place. Not, hmm. <laughs> not going to sound it's that. It's fire hazard here in California. Hot metal what, sparks. sparks. Yeah. Oh, man. But it's so fun. You feel like such a man. You look like. Sito's <laughs> <laughs> uh, Art says Hey, Paul, how is the grass feeling? Weird. Just went over this. <laughs> it's too hot. okay. To be fair, it is too hot to go outside here. It is it like is ninety-five hot. degrees every day, all the time. So I have no, I have no desire to touch grass. Okay, you to be fair, touching the, grass. Touch grass every day I take, I take EV out of the yard, but I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I do not do dedicated grass activities. Do you ever work from outside? Do you ever like bring the laptop out and like? I do. Outside? I'm so I'm so married to my PC that I. I only work on my laptop if I have to if I'm traveling. So I'm just like, 
everyone always asks like do you go to coffee shops or like do you like hang like i really yeah. don't like unless i absolutely have to it's just it's like part of the routine that i have like this whole setup so for a I while like... during like the height of the pandemic and the lockdown i was setting a table up in my garage like facing the road so that as people would walk by i'd say hi and like get like social contact in that in that manner it was fucking nice. sad that's, that's kind of i'm like oh god this a it's, it's kind of wholesome that you had that desire though so i it is wholesome it is wholesome. yeah whereas i, I getting... shut myself down for like three years and didn't talk to anyone so it's, yeah. i guess Same. that's i was gonna say with yeah, the amount of articles that you're putting out like i don't feel like a coffee shop would i feel like a coffee shop would distract you too much and get in the way i'm pretty i'm pretty good at like ignoring distraction like my wife will yeah. be here watching a show like as i'm writing at like full volume like it doesn't really bother me like mm. i just at this point after so many years I, I can phase out a lot of stuff outside of say a baby crying. <laughs> but uh besides that one. yeah yeah that, that one is hard and you don't really want to ignore that uh too long so um I, i'm pretty okay with distractions but i just i just really like my routine and my setup so that's why i don't yeah. really branch out that much yeah it works you don't want to mess it up Uh, Angelo Sullenbides says, where can I watch your live podcast? Twitch? Yeah, Twitch. Twitch. We'll probably let people know. Yeah, we do live stream this on Twitch. I don't know if we mentioned yeah, we it that often. we only live stream it to Twitch, and then it gets posted on YouTube the following day. Yeah. For all the shows, actually. Get basically yeah, that way. It goes to, as well as like the the audio goes up the next day. So yep. like you can get a preview if you watch the night before. I think this one is yeah. starts at... 9 p.m. Eastern. What time is it for you guys? Pacific? Yeah, 6. 6 p.m. Pacific Six. West Coast time. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the the Patreon goes live uh, earlier than the uh, the regular audio version. So if you do, if you don't watch the video version, but you want to get the audio version as fast as possible, also without any ads, then mm -hmm. get the Patreon version. It goes up before, usually several hours before the uh, the actual audio version, and the uh, YouTube version goes up before the YouTube version too. So. I I listened to a podcast. Um, they got they had gotten they do all their ads at the beginning of the podcast, and it was like eight minutes of podcast. I finally had to like break down and like subscribe to their Patreon so I could get the ad free version. I couldn't take the eight minutes anymore. They had eight minutes. Damn, eight minutes. It's like consistently. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, like it's in a playlist and like you're doing something. Yeah, it's in your pocket. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of questions about grass. It's kind of weird. <laughs> Paul, uh, yeah, funny. Any reason? <laughs> Topical. Uh, all right. Last question of the night. All right. M Winter says, "Do you guys think guardians truly make their own fates? With so many entries and stories in the lore about the last city falling." Like Thanos, it seems inevitable. So do we actually have a chance to change that outcome, or is it predestined? I hope Destiny... Oh, I mean, they're probably never going to wrap up, but I hope it, and when it does end, that it ends on us failing. That would be just the best, because we just oh. always unkillable, unkillable, immortal, go about... True. Killing gods. Just end it with, like, you lose, and there's nothing you can do about it. Suck it. The Vex take over. Oh, that would the suck Vex my win. Vex we don't future. make your own fate. You're wrong. Vex fixed your fate. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. I don't think it's inevitable because isn't the whole point of us that we're like outside the whatever paracausal system so we can change things so things aren't inevitable even though they're supposed to be? I mean, yeah. that's the impression I've gotten. But. And allegedly, that's why Destiny's called Destiny, although I think that's a retcon, but... <laughs> yeah, Wasn't the whole naming thing, like, an uh, inside joke when it was, like, their Destiny after Halo and they never found a better name, so they just it just ended up... That makes the most sense out of anything. <laughs> and, <laughs> I think like, I read that somewhere. They didn't have any yeah. of this framework in place when, like, the vanilla story launched. Like, they had to make up a lot of this stuff as the years went on. It wasn't, yeah. like, some 20-year master plan here. It's admirable. Like how well they've done that too. No, they have. Yeah, they've done a good job of it yeah. for sure. It's been really good. Uh, Mylan, I think what what happens at the end of Destiny, and you beat it, and you uh, you lose, and then it pops up wasted on Destiny. The website pulls up with your <laughs> account. 
<laughs> How many hours? <laughs> you wasted to get to the point where you just lost, man. I like it. <laughs> this is good touch grass. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah it'd, it'd be like go touch grass for like, I don't know, a month and wait for our next IP to drop. See you then. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon we'll get you reckon we'll get hints in destiny about the new ip like we reckon they'll put you know little posters up somewhere or easter eggs that like hint they at. did in reach reach they put a, yeah, like a they poster did, yeah. of destiny yeah they'd have to yeah, do something real hidden though because everyone would be all over it if it was too obvious yeah i mean they'll find it regardless maybe maybe when they're ready to announce stuff maybe maybe a week before a little cheeky easter egg somewhere yeah yeah give it a hype I bet they'll connect. Not that it. I got a need. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well. Did we do it? I think we did it. Episode 299. Complete in the books. 299. Uh, next week is episode 300. Right. And I Copy can that. confirm that we will have Holtzman. <gasps> the man. The Holtzman. The crawdad on himself. Next week. And we will also Dorito. have. Mama Bird Dorito. <laughs> for Ran. Mr. Oh, nice. FM3. Oh. Awesome. So it the should be... Uh... is opening up. Season of the Haunted. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I caught Holtzman like making fun of somebody for, for something they ate on Twitter the other day. I was... I couldn't believe it. How could that guy make fun of somebody else? <laughs> Holtz could make fun of someone else eating <laughs> yeah, something? For their food choices. Yeah, yeah. that should never happen. <laughs> yeah, if you're mama birding just... anything, you should not be pointing fingers. Yeah, I, I all I did a is self fulfilling prophecy. Glass houses, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Well, that's gonna be fun. So yeah, it will um, be fun. Yeah. It will be expect the um, no destiny, pretty much because yeah. Patrick is a bunchy employee and can't talk about destiny. <laughs> yeah. on, upon a bunch of podcasts. You um, gonna spill the beans on Lightfall? <laughs> But it will be lots of lots of ex exciting memories of 300 episodes, and of course, Planet Destiny before that. So it should just be like a big old big yeah. old party episode. It's a lot yeah. of episodes. I'm gonna get some of that space kush, and uh, for the show, mm -hmm. space kush. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get some of that. Oh, get in touch with the uh, the Gore, Silverback strain. <laughs> oh, oh, now you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is episode 299. Thank you so much for tuning in and hanging out. Uh, shout out to our Patreon members and our Twitch subs for supporting the shows, uh, all of the shows on the feed. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.